Hi, my name is Dan. I'm here. I'm going to demonstrate to you today the Lego WeDo car. Um, the arrangement and the sort of as a project we made. Um, and basically how it works and how to use it with the app. Um, as you can see, it's a fairly simple arrangement. It's got uh, a skid steer arrangement, two wheels, one for left, or two motors, I'm sorry, two, one for left, one for right. Each one of them is connected by a gear. And below that, there's basically a swivel gear. Or no, I'm sorry, a bevel gear which is connected to the drive shaft for each wheel. And this drives each wheel independently and allows you to steer it. So you can see the smart hub is located in the middle and it's facing this direction simply because uh, I needed the room for the cables to come out the back. And as you look down below, you can see there's a caster wheel. And the caster wheel basically allows it to move back and forth. Um, a swivel in the direction of the travel which is important otherwise you'll get a lock up if you try to make this a stiff wheel in line with basically the swivel axis so you don't want to do that anyway now that uh, it's all here you can basically see that it's a very simple arrangement so there's no sensors on here simply because um, the smart hub only has two connections can't have any sensors would be nice but maybe next time I'll figure out something for that um, now I'll show you oh, first of all I'll just show you the app of course start off with and um, I have this app installed here on my tablet. Um, this is a Samsung uh, Galaxy Tab A 2016 version, so it uses Bluetooth, um, low energy, of course. And so I start the app. Ooh, start. It's coming. As you can see, it comes up here, and there's only about four buttons which are useful. And as you can see right now, everything on the connection is off. Basically, it says connection on status is connected is false. And down below it says it's offline, which is, yeah, of course, we knew that. So now, to connect to it, of course, we first need to say, um, push the button on the we do until it starts to blink. On the computer, or on the tablet, we push scan, push list devices. You can see that it's here connected. Ah, okay. Now, Lego we do beeped and says it's connected. We have a blue LED, which means it was connected and it's stable. As you can see here, it lists the name of the connection. Um, I didn't change the name, so that's just what it is. The address and the status is connected is true. And down below, you can see also it says it's online. Right now, it's online, but it's not basically giving any commands. It's just waiting. And so now just as a test, I want to make sure things are working. And so you can try with the LED test. And if you push start, basically that starts sending commands. As you can see right now, the LED is basically blue, which means not so much interesting. But when you turn the LED on, you can tilt it. And tilting it left or right basically changes the color of the LED. Now this is only a demonstrator technology, so it's not super useful, but for nifty tricks. You can make a disco if you want. I don't know. But anyway, more interesting is, of course, what the motors will do. Now, to start that, I'm going to put it on the floor so I don't crash. But uh, now here you say, here's a checkbox that says motor one, motor two, motor two reverse, motor one reverse. This, These two motor reverses are basically, in case you find that your connection is not right, I'll show you in a second. That's true in our case. Now if you start with pushing motor 1, motor 2, now it's telling you what power is going. Um, power, global power is zero, which means nothing. There's no power because we're basically a stationary um, horizontal tablet, so it doesn't make a difference. Power to the left wheel, power to the right wheel. It's basically below the threshold where it's going to activate now, so it's not doing anything. Um, the steering left or right, this is basically the angle of incline where it reaches the maximum power. And I'll demonstrate why you need to adjust that in a second. Now, it went to sleep on me. Just a second. Now, if I pick it up, and I'll show you first what happens. I try to tilt the guy, and it's going to start going around in circles. Whoops. Which means I want it to go forward, but instead it goes around and around. Which simply means that we need to reverse one of the motors. So I say motor 2 reverse. Now, when I pick it up, and I try to drive... Okay, it goes backwards. Now here it goes backwards. And then I try to turn it. You have to have some forward momentum. As you can see, I'm tilting it. Tilting the tablet and trying to drive and make a video at the same time. Doesn't work quite so well. I need a helper, but everybody was busy. 
Anyway, as you can see, you can kind of tilt the tablet and it'll drive around like this. And if you hold it horizontal, it's going to stop. Tilting it backwards like this, of course, will make the car go backwards and also in that direction. So you can kind of get the hang of this. You can steer, drive it around, and your Lego We Do car can be go quite a good direction, of course. Now, if you find that there's too much power being activated too fast, you can basically set the maximum incline. Say that I want the maximum to be reached at 70% incline or 75, I don't know. Probably good to set the steering at the same level. Now you have a little bit more grace period in terms of how much you tilt it and it makes before it starts activating the power. On a big tablet, this is easier to control, but when you have a small phone, of course, like my Samsung S6, which I'm making the video with, of course, so I can't demonstrate, but uh, it's a little bit easier to um, adjust these power settings back and forth, then you can get it right. Anyway, as you can see, we get back in the corner. Might need some help to get it back, but uh, steering nicely. All right, we do. Turn this way, turn this way. No, no, don't crash on the couch, no. Okay, go forward, turn, turn, turn. Oops, backwards again, turn. Good. Now, if you get some problems with it, of course, make sure you have fresh batteries, because I just checked a few minutes ago that the connection wasn't stable, and the reason why is I found some old batteries in a drawer, and they just weren't quite up to speed. So, anyway, as you can see, this is basically how it works. Now, I demonstrated it here. What I'll show you next is when you go back to the app itself, it goes into kind of a sleep mode. But if you push disconnect, basically it disconnects from the WeDo and it starts to shut down. And also, if you push back on the, the app, then of course that also disconnects and shuts it down. Either way, but the WeDo shuts off by itself, and that's basically the only other way to shut it down, other than taking out the batteries. Um, but anyway, I hope that demonstrates it well. Good luck with your project, and uh, any questions, just let me know on the website. Thanks. Bye.